Hey guys, today I'm showing you how to make rocket exhaust in Blender. And the rocket exhaust I'm making today is kind of loosely based off of the Raptor engine exhaust from SpaceX's Raptor rocket engine. And I'm going to be showing you how to model it, texture it, and I'm going to show you an example of what it looks like on a rocket. So the first thing we're going to start out with is the actual modeling. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to add a circle. I'm going to click through on my numpad. I'm going to rotate on the x-axis 90 degrees and I'm going to go into edit mode. The way I'm making the rocket is I'm modeling it in sections. So you'll see how like I think of this is a section right here like kind of like where it has this dip. That's one section, this is another section and then kind of on and on. So I'm going to model this first section right now. So first I'm going to start off with something that's a bit smaller than the hump. So I'm going to extrude it bring it out, size it up, and then scale it down again, move it forward, and then scale it up again. And then what I'm going to do is add a subdiv modifier to it, make it about three, and now I'm going to move on to modeling the second section. So actually, I guess I could make this a bit longer. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, so now I'm going to be modeling the second section. So I'm going to start off by adding a circle again, rotating it on the X 90 degrees, going to, uh, well, actually, first I'm going to bring it up here, bring it, like, right up to the edge, shrink it a bit, go into edit mode, and then you'll notice this picture's not really that good, but the other pictures you'll see that there's kind of like a triangle shaped white thing right there and so that's what I'm going to emulate in Blender with modeling so if I bring this in sort of like that and then scale this up scale this down and then add a subdiv to it Eventually, when we texture it, it'll actually look like kind of how the other one had this triangle thing. So now that I'm seeing that, I'm actually going to shrink this a bit more and bring this over. So once you have something that looks like this, we can move on to just copying this. And I copy mine with Alt-D because when you use Alt-D instead of Shift-D, it actually makes another instance of it. So any modifications that I make to this will also be made to this. So when you're trying to make a lot of things from one thing, uh, always make sure to use Alt-D. It's way safer than using Shift-D. Okay. And so now what I'm just going to do is I'm going to copy this a bit to the back of the last section we made and shrink it and kind of insert it into the back. And I'm just going to do that a couple times so we kind of have a long trail of it. And once you have all those little sections modeled, I'd say you're pretty much done when you have seven or something that looks like this. We're going to start modeling the skin, because every good rocket exhaust has to have a skin, as you can see in this. So this is just going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a another circle again. Rotate it X90. Go, go into edit mode and then we're just going to kind of model this to go over all the features of the exhaust. And we don't need to make this too high quality because we are going to add a subdiv surface to it. So I'm just going to come over here and just follow the contours of the rocket exhaust. Okay, now that we have the skin modeled, we can just add a subdiv surface modifier. Now the next things we're going to add is going to be the little uh, variations in it. So we're going to be using a displace modifier to actually displace the geometry in our rocket exhaust model because we're, we're not going to want it to look all even. We're going to want it to actually like change and like going to have that fire aspect to it that most rocket exhausts have. So the way we're going to be doing that is first we're going to add a solidify modifier. And first I'm going to be adding this to the outside skin. 
So I'm going to make the thickness 0.16, which makes it go in. But once we have the solidify modifier, I'm going to add a displace modifier. And so as soon as you add the displace modifier, you'll, look, you'll notice that it looks bloated. It got fat all of a sudden. What we can do to fix that is click New, go to the Texture panel, and add a Clouds Texture. And now you'll see that it looks, it's very spiky. But we don't want this spiky. So you can go down to the Displace Modifier down here. Change the strength, something like 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Really doesn't matter, you just don't want it too, too big. And one thing that I am noticing is that with the Displace Modifier, since it's making the geometry go down at some points, you can see the inside of the rocket exhaust. So what we can do to fix that is click Tab, click A to select everything, click S, and then click X, and then click Y. Now we can just scale it up on the X and Y. It doesn't actually affect the length. So one thing we're going to want to set up right now is you'll notice that if we actually play the animation, uh, it doesn't move. And we are going to want that to move. So what we're going to do is I'm going to add a cube. You can make it anything. Move it far to one direction on the Y axis. Click I on the first keyframe or zero keyframe. Go to 250. And then bring the cube somewhere very far away and put that keyframe. And you'll notice that it kind of slows down at the beginning and the end and speeds up during the middle. We don't want that. We're going to click T on our timeline and change the interpolation to linear. Now you'll notice that it stays at a constant speed the whole time. And now what we can do, if we go back to our rocket exhaust skin, we can go to coordinates click object and then find our cube you'll notice that when we hit the play button it moves kind of like it's rocket exhaust being spewed out of a rocket and I'm also going to go to object shade smooth so the next thing we're going to want to do is kind of do the same process with the inside exhaust what we did to like the skin of the exhaust so I'm going to hide the outside skin of the exhaust click on this and I'm going to add a solidify and bring it in. So instead of it going outside, we're going to make it positive. So it goes in. So again, probably like 0 0.1, 0 0.12 works. And then like the other one, I'm going to add a displace modifier. I'm going to be adding the same old texture. And so again, like the old one, we're going to have to mess with the strength so it's not as crazy. So I'm going to do a 0.1, shade it smooth. I'm also going to go to the coordinates, change it from local to object, and object to cube. And so if we play it, it moves. And I'm going to want to do the same thing for these ones. So I'm going to start by adding the modifiers onto the first section. So I'm going to add a modifier, solidify like the other ones, make it go in instead of out. And then once we have the thickness that we want, we're going to add our displace modifier. And we're going to make this our texture. And then again, like the other one, we're going to bring down the strength. So we're going to shade it smooth. And one trick we can do to get all the modifiers that we have on this one onto our other sections is to select all the sections. And then if this isn't yellow, shift click on it so it is yellow and click Control L. And then this panel, click Modifiers. And you'll see that all of our sections of engine exhaust actually have the same modifiers. The thing I forgot to do. Let's change the coordinates to object and then select cube. But we can easily get that to everything by just selecting them all again. Make sure this one's yellow, click control L and add a modifier. And now you'll notice that all of them are moving. And if I add the skin back, you see that all of them are moving. One reason why our viewport display is kind of slow is because we actually have a lot of geometry now. So what we can do is just turn down the levels in viewport to like two or something. Okay, and now we only have one last thing to model, and that is the flame comes off the very end of it. Kind of exhaust trail. It's very flamey, and it's not very straight. And so the next thing I want to do is to model that. So it's actually very simple to model it. If we add our cursor back here, like through on our numpad, add a circle. We can rotate on the X, like 90. Uh, bring it up here, kind of to like the two-thirds section of our exhaust. 
click E and extrude it all the way past the end of the engine and make it like to a point. And then I'm going to click on the loop cut tool and I'm going to go up here to number of cuts and change it to like five and I'm going to loop cut it. And one thing we can do with this now is we can edit the geometry. So I'm going to curl the front section in and then keep all these sections the same. So you should have something that looks a bit like this. So and then again like the other ones we're going to want to add a subdivision surface modifier. I'm going to bring it to 3 in the render, 2 in the viewport so we actually have frame rate in the viewport. And then I'm going to add a solidify modifier. This one's not going to be very thick. Like you can just leave it at 0 0.1 or 0 0.2. It just looks weird without the solidify modifier. And then we're going to add a displace modifier. Now this time we are going to have a new displacement modifier. So create a new one and name it like flame. And then go into the texture panel down here. And then add a distorted noise texture. So make this texture very big. And at first you'll notice that you can't really drag it past two. But that's fine because we can just make it like, if you click on it, you can type in four. And now it'll go all the way up to like five. So I've settled with an amount of 1.2 a size of 20 but it might be different for you and depending on like what size you have but this is like what works for me and try to be around this and this should give you a good result so now we know that we're done with that go to the modifiers tab and we're going to go down to this place and we're going to show you what it looks like so if i go to coordinates object and select our cube that we animated earlier and i click play you'll just notice that it kind of looks like i don't know it doesn't looks like anything it looks crap but what we can do to kind of make it that swaying motion is change the direction from normal to x and this will kind of give it like kind of a flame motion but you'll notice that it only moves on one axis so like if i play it on this axis it looks good if i play it on this axis it looks like crap <laughs> so we can change that by duplicating this and then change the direction from X to Y. And you'll notice that it moves on both axes. Now that we have those two displaces, we're going to add one more displace modifier. And this is just going to give it that kind of flamey look like the other sections. So we're just going to add displace. And we're going to give it our first texture we made. And then like the other times, we're going to take the strength down a bit. And this is what our flame is looking like. And also I just moved up the amount in the texture for the flame texture a bit. Get it a bit more flamey. And now we are done with the actual modeling of our exhaust. Now it is time for shading. So in the shading tab, what we're going to want to do is I'm going to first add a shader to our exhaust skin. So I'm going to go to new and I'm going to delete principal BSDF. Click shift A. I'm going to add a volume, a principal a principled a volume and first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to cycles because EV doesn't really work with volume it's not really that good at volume so I'm also going to kind of give us a white world so you can kind of see what's going on so the first thing we're going to want to do is change the density to like zero and we're going to add a color ramp plug the color ramp into the emission color and then get a mapping node and then get a texture coordinate node. So what we're going to do with these is we're going to plug the generated into the vector on the mapping node and then plug the mapping node into the factor on the color ramp node. And you'll notice if we go back to our reference image that the start of it is blue and then it kind of transitions into a purple color. So we can do that really simply with the color ramp node. So I'm going to change the black one. I'm going to change, I'm going to move the white and the black kind of down. And I'm going to change the white one to a kind of like blue color. Make it a bit darker. I'm going to change the black one into a purple color. 
And I'm going to add another one. It's going to be a bit purple, but I'm going to change it to a lighter purple. So I'm going to take it to like somewhere like here. Maybe even lighter. Like that. And now you'll notice that there's, there's still no color on it. But what we can do to add color is turn up the emission strength. And so personally, I'm going to keep it at like something like 3.3 for now. But we might change it. So one thing you'll notice is that the blue is not really at the front of it. Because we want it at the front of it. But it's kind of along the top of it. So what we can do to that is in the mapping node, we can change the rotation to fit the front of it. Okay, so these are the rotation values that got me to this effect. So if you if it has a weird rotation, mess with the rotation values to actually get it to like be straight on the top. And one way you can kind of it's easier to see what the color is is you either turn the emission strength up a lot, or you could just plug the color ramp into the surface, and you can see how the color looks. And I did have to, with the color ramp, by default, the interpolation is on linear, but change it to ease, and you'll have a smoother transition between the different colors, and it won't be like a stark difference. Now we pretty much have our exhaust shader. So I'm going to start adding it to the other parts of our exhaust. And actually, since we clicked Alt-D to duplicate all these, it actually automatically gave them our material. And then I'm going to add, I'm going to re-enable my flame. And I'm going to add the material to the flame. And then I'm actually going to duplicate the shader. And I'm going to subtract. Well, first I'm going to select the blue, and then I'm going to subtract the blue. Because there is no blue beginning of the flame. Okay, and now you have a rocket exhaust in Blender. Um, it looks pretty good when you add it onto the end of a rocket ship. I'll show you an example of that. So thanks for watching this tutorial. If you want to keep up on more tutorials that I make, I make them, I'm making them pretty often, then subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.